Today, I'm going to show you how I built this 24 inch laminar flow hood. I've recently taken an interest in tissue culture and one of the essentials in tissue culture is it has to be done in a sterile environment. That means no risk of mold spores or anything getting down into your test tubes. Tissue culture, when I say that, I'm referencing growing plants of really small cuttings in test tubes and then multiplying those little plantlets out into their own jars and then dividing those again into more jars and to potentially the math comes out to one cutting could turn into 4,000 cuttings over the period of about six months. So seeing how I'm starting a nursery, I was thinking, how can I rapidly multiply some of my plants? Well, I had taken an interest in tissue culture back last year. I just never followed through because following the protocols just seemed difficult to me. I ordered the book, uh, plants, in test tubes or something like that. I'll link it in the description. And I read through the book and it seemed easy enough, but I just had a problem with the mixture of the protocol of the ingredients. So I picked up the book again, I broke it down, watched a couple of videos that are on YouTube that kind of shows me everything about it. And I decided to build a laminar flow hood. Essentially, I have a stack of lumber here in my shop and I'm, I don't have full use of my shop because of this big stack of lumber. I had several different materials to choose from. Well, I wanted my laminar flow hood to be light so that I can move it from room to room. And so I chose to build this one out of cypress. Cypress is antibacterial. It means uh, it doesn't inhabit spores or something like that in case it gets wet and it's lightweight and then I could put a seal on it to make it airtight. So tissue cultures has to be done again in a sterile environment and it's more of a laboratory type of setting. I've made this um, so that I can work right in front of this positive airflow of clean air. This micron filter filters particles down to microns of 0 0.03 or something like that. And anyway, it's supposed to get rid of most all of the stuff that's floating around in the ambient air. So I'm gonna put this into a small bedroom and I will turn this on and let this start filtering out. And then I'm gonna be bringing videos to you of me doing tissue culturing. So that's something that you can look forward to in future videos. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to the video and show you how I built it. Okay, before we get started building our laminar flow hood, there's a few things that we gotta do. One, I had to grab some boards and start putting some boards together to make boards that were wide enough. I wanted this to be more of a piece of furniture than just a plywood box that I can just get me by. I'm a bit of a woodworker and I like for my stuff to look halfway decent. So we're gonna be building this one out of cypress. And the reason I chose cypress is well, because I have a lumber yard full of cypress and right here beside me in my shop is a whole stack of lumber that is air drying and it's in my way right now. So I don't have full use of my shop like I normally would. Uh, but I have a sawmill, I have a stack of lumber to choose from. So I've chosen cypress. Uh, it's cypress is light. It's not heavy like oak. So if I'm going to be moving this uh, flow hood around, I don't want it to be too heavy. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be kind of a hybrid. If you've ever seen any other videos of people building laminar flow hoods, <clears throat> I took bits and pieces of what those other people did and just kind of making my own project out of this. So if you see one or two pieces that have been used in other videos and you know why. All right. So whenever I'm putting my pieces of wood together, I went to Harbor Freight and I got a dialing jig, just a few dollars for that. And then I go to my big box store and I get these little wooden dials. These are three eighths. And I drill holes with my drill and I put glue in there and I push them together and I let them dry. 
that's essentially all it is to do is to making up these boards. I've already got some of these boards that are made up. Some of the parts are already cut. I did save a few things to do on camera and bring you guys along. I haven't built this, so this is not a breakdown and reassembly in front of the camera. What you see is what you get. This is my first time doing it. I've never built one before, so we're gonna do this one together. All right, so this, <clears throat> all right, so this board that I'm using here, this is gonna be the top. And the way you do these, is you just draw a line across two boards, lining up two points. Flip it up on the end. I'm gonna use my 3 8 bit. So I put it, that in there, and then there's a little dash in here. I know you can't see it on camera, but I'm gonna line that dash up with that little line that I made. My 3 8 bit. Flip this up. And I've done a lot of these, so I just know how deep to go. But you just want to make it deep enough that your, that your uh, pins um, allow your boards to come together. So essentially, it's going to be half the length of the pin deep in the wood. Same thing on the matching side over here. So our base of the whole unit is going to be this sheet of melamine. I chose melamine because I had it. I've had melamine for other projects. I use it for my resining projects. If I'm casting a resin or a concrete on here, it doesn't stick to melamine very well. So that's the reason I use melamine. So if I'm going to be doing tissue culture, which is what I'm primarily using this laminar flow hood for, is it's easy to sanitize because it's not porous and I could just spray a bleach or a disinfectant on here and it would rub right off and nothing actually soaks down into the pores. So that's why I chose melamine. All right, so let's go ahead and start putting some pieces together. All right, so this is some boards that I had glued up earlier. So I have a glue seam right here. This is essentially gonna be the front of the laminar flow hood. This is going to be the back and this will just be one of the sides. On the front right here I drew a line at 33 degrees because I've got a piece of plexiglass that I'm going to put over this so that whenever I'm working in the hood I'm not breathing down into the hood that I'm just breathing over the top of the plexiglass. So that's what that uh, that's there for. So I have my saw set to 33 degrees We'll go ahead and make our cut. All 
All right. The width that I chose for my flow hood is 24 inches across. And then my fan is gonna be sitting on top. And so my box where my filter is gonna be, is gonna be a 10 inch wide box. That's gonna give me about 15 or 16 inches forward that, uh, of working room in front of the, um, the HEPA filter. So 22 inches, 24 inches wide, 14 inches tall is what we're working with here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my square, I'm gonna lay it right here, and that way I can use it as a guide to hold my boards square as I fasten them. I have a little nail gun and I use my nail gun just to hold things together until I can get a screw in there. So this is not permanent, it's just to hold it together. So I'm using an inch and a half screw. You can use whatever screws you want. Um, these are just some of the ones I had handy. So that's what I'm using. All right, so the next stage of this build is we're gonna start building out where the HEPA filter is gonna go. Because my fan is an eight inch fan, I decided to make at least a 10 inch box so that when the air blows, it blow, it'll have a, a one inch gap on either side of the fan and then it's gonna blow through the air filter. So I went ahead and measured out from the back to the front, 10 inches on here just to go by and on the sides and I found my center. So we're gonna go ahead and start building out the front of our box. All right, so I've got this piece of wood here and I've pre-measured and cut. And essentially what we have is these boards are four and a half inches on both sides and then that leaves us uh, the 13 and three quarter inches in the middle that we need for the filter and it's just going to sit in here like this and then this one is measured the 11 the 11 and 5 8 up off the floor for the filter to fit set in this way one thing I want to show you about this filter and I'll link it down in the description the filter that I'm using. <clears throat> this filter has a foam seal around the edge to kind of help um, keep air from moving around it. So I like that. The one with the tabs on it go to the inside so that you can pull the tabs out. And then the louvered will go on the front. So I'm just leaving this in the box during the build. And sometimes I just pull it out while I'm taking measurements. All right, so I've got marks 10 inches here and then marks 10 inches on my wall. 
and I'm ready to just pop this right into place. This is just glued. I let that glue overnight. Check it out one more time before I put a staple in it. And just again, put these staples in here just to hold it until I can get a screw in it. That way it just doesn't slip and slide on me. And then we'll go back and put screws in. should hold all right so in order to hold the HEPA filter against something I decided to put picture framing around it it's kind of dress it up a little bit and it's basically it's going to serve those two purposes so I got a little piece of wood that I cut and the HEPA filter is going to sit on top of this down in here and I've could have I could have actually done this step earlier but I gotta capture some of this work on camera, right guys? So I'm using just an old scrap piece of wood, but this scrap piece is gonna get that filter up just a quarter inch um, off the melamine, but the filter isn't hid behind the picture framing that we're gonna do. We'll go ahead and just give this a little bit of glue to hold that in there. All right, we'll let that dry and we'll move on to what's next. All right guys, next thing we want to do is start framing out around where our filter area is going to be. While our filter is in here and the foam pieces are against this, we want to try to dress it up a little bit and give it something that the filter is against instead of running the risk of just falling out or you know falling back in so what we do is we're going to take these little uh, one and a quarter inch pieces of wood cut 45 degrees on them put one here at the bottom and then put them up the side and basically just a big picture frame and that's going to give that filter something to press against and help stop any kind of airflow or air leaks that are coming from around the filter. So I'm going to lay this down and we'll go ahead and get this glued up.
All right, while we wait for that filter frame to dry, we're gonna go ahead and move on with putting the top on up here and we're gonna get the hole cut out so that the fan can fit down into it. That's what's next. In order to match our 31.6 is the measurement that I actually took, 31.6 degree angle. The reason I chose that people is because that's what locks in on my sliding miter saw. And I thought it locked in at 33 degrees and I looked a little bit further and it's marked at 31.6. That's what we went with. You can do any angle that best suits you, but now that's what we've got to measure against is 31.6. We're going to put a 31.6 degree angle right on this front edge so that our plexiglass uh, rests against that. We're also going to come back and put a board with a 36 inch or a 31.6 inch bevel on the front here to support the front of the glass also. So I'm going to go ahead and take this over and uh, get this cut. Just a little note, I like using the Craig screws because they have a cutter that's built onto the tip of the screw. So it cuts the wood as it goes in it, which helps prevent blowout and cracking the wood if you get close to an edge. It essentially just drills a hole as it's going down so you don't have to worry about busting out your wood. Whereas if I use a regular screw, it would probably bust out right there as it swole the wood up and out. Okay, so we're getting ready to do the fan. The fan is a 400 cubic feet per minute uh, fan. It's an eight inch fan. It's an inline duct fan and it has a variable controller on it. And I kind of give this a little test run. It doesn't force a lot of air. So you have to crank it all the way up and you'll see that later when we get ready to test this out. But um, we're gonna put this right where we want it <laughs> draw our line and then we're going to come back with the jig with a, uh, a drill bit and we're going to give ourselves a starting hole to get our jigsaw bit down in there and then we're going to be very careful and we're going to cut the diameter of that circle out we're going to try to stay within the lines not go out it's going to be less issues if we stay right at the line where we need to be less gaps to come back and fill in less air liquid air leakage All right, so we've decided that it's probably not a good idea to put the, the uh, little wooden piece right here. That might block my vision as I'm working here. But I did lay the, the uh, plexiglass up here 
and it doesn't sag very much because of the support that it has up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a little light sanding on this. I've got some uh, Minwax polyacrylic, so we're going to put a satin finish on it. And more than anything, I want to cover the inside so that I'll be able to spray it with like a an alcohol or a chloride, Clorox and sanitize it without have to worry about anything soaking into the wood. Just wiping this down with a, uh, a damp rag towel and basically it just takes all the dust that might be down in the pores and just kind of lifts that off of there. Making sure that we got a good clean surface before we put a finish on it. All right, while I had it flipped up on end and I was uh, doing the finish on this, I figured I would go ahead and put the face frame on. The face frame is probably sitting over there for an hour or two. So it should be set enough that I could grab it and put it up here without it all falling to pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and try to glue this down. Oh, and I took this bottom piece out because I realized I didn't have it in the right place. It's supposed to be behind here. So we might just, we'll have to adjust that later.
Now, the last thing to do is to plug it all in and evaluate the airflow and give it one final checkout before we call it good. Let's do it. Let's hit the button. Good light. You hear that fan? Here, hold on. Very quiet. I am very happy with this build. And I think that the uh, there's not going to be any bother bothersome noise coming from here that some laminar flow hoods that I've heard are really loud and they just kind of fill the space up with uh, a lot of ambient noise. But I'm really not hearing much with this. But let's go ahead and check airflow. So I got a cigarette lighter and what we're going to be doing is looking for this flame to bend. If we get uh, the flame to bend, then we know how we have a good airflow. I'm going to check it against the filter and different areas in here and right here at the opening. The, when I'm doing my work, I'm going to be in front of the filter doing the work, but I want to have enough space to where I can set stuff off to the sides. And I still want this to be a clean environment. So if we have this shield and we're narrowing the airflow to flow only through here instead of it just being wide open. If this was all wide open and I didn't have sides, it would be sucking air in from the sides. So we've extended it out. We've brought the shield down to make this entire work area a sterile environment. So let's go ahead and give it the lighter test. Oh yeah, you see that? Let me bring you in closer. See how it's been in that flame? That's a nice air push right there. That's a, probably a little too much when it's flickering the flame like that. But it's still bent all the way up here. Really flowing hard right there. But it seems like no matter where we go in front of this filter, we have really good air pushing through that filter. Now I expect that if I get over here in these dead spaces, it's not going to move much. And it's not. I mean the flame is moving a little bit, but it's not bent and it's not sucking air. If this was bent this way, I'd have a really big concern. So let's bring it to the front. We still got good airflow all the way out the front here and past the shield. The flame is still bent and I am about four inches outside of the shield and this is still pushing good clean air. Even over to the very edges, I'm still getting a little bit of airflow over here. Even right to the edge. It's still moving the air. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this build. I know I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed bringing it to you. And hopefully it'll inspire you to go off and build your own uh, flow hood. It really wasn't that hard. I went the extra mile, and I used my own boards, so I had to mill down my boards. But if you just go to the hardware store and you get plywood, plexiglass, and then order the fan off the Amazon, you could build this thing for, I don't know, 100, 150 bucks. It's really not that expensive. If you price one out, um, there's several hundred dollars on even up into the thousands for a little small 24 inch laminar uh, flow hood here. But we're really looking forward to starting our tissue culture and I expect that maybe tomorrow we'll start playing around with it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if this is your first time. All right, remember, keep growing. Keep building and always keep adventuring. Together, we're Flompton Famous. We'll see you next time.